Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to add like localizations to your app. So first off, what you're going to want to do is create a place to put your different localizations. This basically allows you to have different languages presented to the user to, based on what they've set inside their actual phone settings. So it helps provide a better user experience for the user and will mean that they sort of can understand how to use your app a bit better because it's in their native language. So first off, you're just going to want to define your different um, objects. So those are just going to have properties with um, the property will link to a translation. So I've got my app name of localization tutorial and then I'm going to have a welcome. Um, that's hello and that's for my English language. I actually don't want my um, app name to change for the different translations. So I'm not going to provide a value for Spanish and Japanese and it's just going to fall back, fall back to that English translation because that's the only one that provides an app name translation. So I'll create my Spanish ones now. So I'm just going to provide a welcome here. Like I said, I'm not providing a translation for app name. That will just be hola. And then I'll do the same thing once again. I will go ahead and create a translation for Japanese. If you had lots of different languages and lots of different translations, you might want to split these out further into their own files just to make it easier to work with. Um, but for the purposes of this simple demo, putting them in the same file is good enough for me. You may even want to create a separate folder. So once you've defined all your different translations, you're going to want to export them so you can use them in your app.js and pass them as translations to the i18n library, which is what we'll be using to help us retrieve our translations for a particular locale. Cool, so I've got those and now I can head on over to my app.js. I'm going to import a few different things. So first off, I'm just going to go ahead and import um, my different languages. So I'm going to import English, Spanish and Japanese so that I can use them within this file. And I'm just going to import that from that localizations file that I've just created. Now that I've done that, there are a few other things I want to import. So I'm going to want to import use state. That's because I'm going to have locale as a state variable so that when I want to change it, it will trigger the updates on the screen. Um, and I'm also going to import star as localization because that's how I'll get the user's locale setting from their phone settings. It'll be quite nice and easy to um, create the localizations that way. I'm also importing this i18n library which is really useful and makes things super easy for translations and just um, does a lot of built-in stuff for you so you don't need to code up some separate um, code that would just be reused again and again. So first off I'm just finding my locale state variable I'm going to use state and I'm going to actually default that value to the localization.locale. Then what I'm going to do is I need to configure my i18n library so that um, it will fall back to um, whatever language I've set as my default or whichever language has an existing translation. So I'm setting the fallback to be true because I want it to fall back particularly for that app name um, which I've defined in English but no other language. I also want to set up my different translations. So I'm going to have my um, different languages that I've already imported and I'm just going to pass those to the i18n library. Finally, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to set that locale. So I'm just going to set that locale to be that state variable. Once again, whenever that state variable changes, it's going to trigger my app to update and the correct translations to appear on screen. 
So now that I've got my i18 in library set up, the next thing I need to do is actually use it to get the translation. My iPhone's set up to English, so that's the first language we're going to see. If I change the language to Spanish or Japanese, that's what I would see on screen. So basically what you want to do is you'll call i18n.t and pass in the property that you want to get the translation for. I just need to put curly brackets around that since it's inside that text component. And I'm going to do the exact same with welcome. Once I save, um, you should see localization tutorial and the welcome message appear on screen, which you do. But currently I have no way of changing that. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to import a button. I'm just going to create some buttons that will allow me to switch to different languages. So I'm going to have a button to allow me to switch to English, a button to allow me to switch to Spanish, and a button to allow me to switch to Japanese. I could, um, and so basically only if the locale is not equal to the language that I want to switch to will I show that button, otherwise I will show nothing there just because I don't want to show a button that does nothing. It could just be confusing to the user. Um, you may have this in like a settings page. You might have some sort of picker that you can use inside a settings page so that they, you can set the default for the app. And that could just be if you're providing limited localizations. You might find that you don't cover all the different localizations. So you want them to only be able to, um, to default to something rather than you choosing the default because maybe they might know a second language or be more familiar with a second language. And you don't want to sort of limit them just to what their system settings are. So that's one reason why you might want to be able to manually set that locale rather than use the value from the system settings. So yeah, I've got my different buttons for switching to English, Japanese and Spanish. Um, I could have actually put this switch to English Spanish and Japanese text into my localizations, but for the purpose of this demo, I didn't think it was um, necessary, as you can already sort of see how the i18n library and localization libraries work. So if I click these buttons, it will switch to the different translations pretty seamlessly. And you could see that you could easily build that into your application to provide a better user experience. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today and if you have, please like and subscribe for more content or my code will be on GitHub as usual.